Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. John Sacturas directly from Dubai with Prince Rafael Andujar Vilches directly from Spain. Today, together we're going to take the Royal House of Cappadocia all over the world in multiple languages because we believe that we need to increase our faith. We need to have stronger hope and together we should come together as one team, one family, one community to participate and contribute for the better well-being for the humanity for the future. Prince Rafael, it's a pleasure to have you here in, in Dubai, in the Asira Studios. So if you can say a few words to our English-speaking community, the importance of the Royal House and how we together can make a difference worldwide. Well, it's a pleasure to be here, John, and uh, you know, what can I say, you know, to uh, the Royal House, the uh, Royal House of Cappadocia uh, has been uh, going around, you know, for uh, about uh, 1,700 years, you know, with the different uh, periods, of course, you know, it comes, uh, it goes back to Constantine the Great, you know, uh, who created uh, the five Constantinian orders. And, you know, since uh, uh, I am been uh, uh, acting as the uh, Grand Master and uh, since I've been uh, officially uh, become the uh, Prince Grand Master of the uh, Sovereign and uh, Royal or Constantinian Order of Cappadocia. Uh, we've been, uh, I've been taking care about uh, exactly uh, uh, helping kids, mostly, you know, in needs, uh, what we call the kids of the street, you know, we've been doing uh, actions in Philippines, in Ethiopia, in many other countries of the world, you know, in Peru, and, uh, and this is what we pretend to do. We pretend to bring as many people as possible uh, within the order uh, we have, uh, who have the same uh, philosophy and the same uh, wishes and the same desire to help uh, less fortunate people like we are and make uh, the order bigger uh, in order to contribute more to the well-being of all those people. At the end of the day, we are going to die. Exactly. At some point. Sure, we all What can die. we do during our living years? How can we help other children, especially children? Yeah. The man, uh, in the Philippines, man, about two million children live in the streets. Well, I mean, I, I am been going to Philippines for the last 20 years of my life. Okay. Wow. Well, I went before too, but let's say the last 20 years of my life, I've been going sometimes every year, sometimes every two years, but I've been going very often, you know. Uh, just in Manila, there are like two and a half million kids living in the streets. Some wow. of them, I was surprised, because I met some of those kids, they come and, uh, you know, you don't know what language to talk to her. Of course, I don't speak Tagalog. Uh, so, uh, and uh, the Spaniards, we were there for about 350 or 400 years. And the only thing we left them is the religion. They are all very Catholic, but that's all. We, di we didn't left anything more, uh, no wells, and certainly not the language. So the Americans come after, and most of the people there who speak another language than Tagalog, they speak English, English. you know. Of course, Tagalog is full of Spanish words, you know, but uh, we cannot say that they automatically understand Spanish. So those little kids who don't uh, speak yet anything except Tagalog, you know, uh, you ask them things and they look at you, and then, you know, the, the final thing is, do you want to eat? Oh, yeah, they, that, that they understand. Take them to McDonald's, whatever. For them, it's like Christmas Day, yes. okay? And then, you know, you try to establish some contact with them. And then I asked some of them, my name, it's Raphael. H how do I have to call you? And uh, some of them, they don't even have a name because the parents don't put them a name so when they abandon them they don't even remember them amazing so god that's really it's a big impact well, when when you start learning so then they talk me to those places where they live in those cemeteries and the bigger one i they speak some english and i asked them how do why do you live here and they say because the death people they don't, they don't throw us out. Wow. Oh my God. This is a, best, a better learning process than going to any psychological school, believe me. Wow. You've traveled a lot, even in Africa. 
Oh yeah. Same problem. Same problem. Same problem. Same problem. Uh, so you know, you come to that point where you say, "My God, huh? some people here in what we call, on between brackets, of course, the civilized country, they complain because the water is not that hot or not that cold or <laughs> or the soap it's uh, it doesn't smell that good." Oh, look at those people. This is where the oral order comes in place to continue exactly the contribution As, and this is when you you feel like well whatever i do for them it i know I'm, i know i cannot help all it's impossible nobody can do everything but if we can help one yeah 10 whatever that's what we're going to take with us yes. you know i have a good example i started helping a lot of them but in particular uh, a little girl that uh, I was introduced to, the name is Maria, and uh, you know, the, how can I say that? You know, you have a bunch of kids, and she had like a lot of uh, sisters and brother, but she was like special, you know, the way she, you see, there was a natural intelligence there, you know, and uh, went to school, she studied, she's this, she's that, you know, and uh, now she's 22 years, and uh, I still help her, you know, because life there is not easy, but whatever I send her to help her, she helped the little brothers and sisters. You know what I mean? Sometime I tell her, I say, Maria, what do you do with all that money? Yeah, well, you know, my China, my sister, and, uh, say, and you know. Yes. And uh, why? Because you give her the example. And now, she say, well, if you help with me, I will help them. I will help them. Pay forward. Exactly, you know. Pay forward. So this is fantastic. And I think this is what, this is the only thing we want to do. We don't want to change the world. We know we cannot change it. Okay. We can improve it. We can improve In certain it. areas. Exactly. Certain as people. much as we can. That's all. Yes. And, and this, is the, this is the good thing. Then you go to Africa, it's exactly the same. You know, I remember, you know, years ago, uh, I went to Ethiopia. And, oh, God. I saw that, I mean, those kids uh, dying from congenital heart defects uh, just because there was no one to take care of them. It was not a surgeon to take care of them, but, uh, but we knew that those kids were saved every day here. So I spoke with doctors in Madrid and here and there, and some of them, they give you their vacations, a full month of vacation, just go there and work. And this is when people show you their what is inside of yes. them. I don't give a shit about going to the beach and vacation. I'm going to go there. If you need me there, I go. No charge. They're not looking for money, whatever. And, uh, and uh, you know, because I was uh, running that big multinational where we had the devices, you know, we give them the devices of the were samples, you know. So everything for those kids. And then you go there three or four years after and you see those kids who are grown up, they they remember what you did for them, believe me, they, you, you like their father, they come say, Baba, Baba, you know, I mean, they, they love you because uh, you help them, you know, and, and, uh, and I say, and it's not that complicated, honestly, it's just by, by willing, you know, a little bit from here, a little bit from there, and put all that together and do it. Sometimes it's 10% uh, of your yeah. income. Yeah, well, you know, I remember <laughs> because as I told you, you know, you know, my, I born in, in North Africa, you know, I grew up in uh, mostly with Muslims and, uh, and Jews. A lot of uh, Jewish and Muslims were in Morocco and in Algeria and so on. And, uh, you know, so I'm pretty familiar with the Quran and so on, you know, and uh, you know what, that thing they call the Sakat, which is 10% of your income mm -hmm. go to the poor and so on. This is magnificent. Yes. It's fantastic. If we can all do that. Yeah. In different levels. I know. We can all, all participate. The world will be a better world to be. Even if it's a little bit. I know. It Does, doesn't matter. But it will be a better place to be. Yes. I know. I agree with that, you know. So anyway, I think uh, that's what we have to do. Just uh, take uh, uh, our experience and our knowledge and try to pass it along to the young generations because uh, uh, it doesn't matter how fast the technology go. Human beings, they're going to be there anyway. Absolutely. 
and with higher needs. I know. The, the more we advance, the more people stay behind. Exactly, and the more, and the more people in need there will be. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's uh, build together a better future for the next generation. Let's continue together the legacy of the Royal Order. That's what we want to do, and that I thank everybody for their contribution. It doesn't matter how much it is. It doesn't matter how it is. Just try to contribute according to your possibility, and we will thank you forever. Thank you very much, and we'll see you soon.